Good morning, first grade. Today is May 8th, 2020. It is Friday. We've had a big week of learning and today's another big day, but you're just about to the end. Let's go over for our schedule for the day. Okay, we have a big day, like I said. Reading, you need your spelling paper. That's the first thing we're gonna do is take that spelling test. Then you need your unit 11 packet and your word workbook. Next, we're gonna do writing, and you need that unit 11 packet. Next is math, and you need your workbook 1B. After that is social studies, and you need your US map. Then for religion, you need this piece of cardstock that I put in the baggie that your family picked up. Okay, looks like this. You also need your construction paper that I sent home the last time your family came to MCA, okay? And you need glue and coloring supplies. All right, so get your spelling paper out and we're gonna start with our spelling test. Okay, so remember to put your name and your date somewhere at the top and to number your test numbers one through 10. I don't have any of that spelling paper and I know your spelling paper is long, so you can do it all the way down or you could do half here, half on the other side. It is up to you, but just make sure you number it one through 10. So pause the video while you're doing that and then come on back when you're ready and I will be playing the spelling test from the super kids like we usually do in our classroom. Okay, first grade, here we are on our spelling test page. So I'll click the button, it will read the word, read a sentence using the word, then say the word one more time, and then I will repeat the word for you. Okay, number one. Super. The kids had a super day at Happy Land. Super. Okay, super. Number one is super. Okay, I'm gonna go to number two. If it gets too fast, just pause the video and unpause when you're ready. Number two. Open. Will you open the door? Open. Number two is open. Open. Number three. Paper. We write and draw on paper. 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 Number three is paper. Paper. Okay, number four. Even. The top of the cake was flat and even. 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 Number four is even. Number five. Silent. When you are silent, you don't make a sound. Silent. Silent. Number five is silent. Number six. Always. I always brush my teeth after breakfast. Always. Always. Number six is always. Number seven. Now. Can we go to the park now? Now. Now. Can we go to the park now? Just in time because some of our parks are starting to open up now. Okay, number eight. There. The kids rode their bikes. There. Remember to use the spelling of there that tells about people owning something. There. This is a special kind of there. There. I'm going to read this one. I'm going to have this one read one more time so you can hear that sentence. There. 
The kids rode their bikes. There. Remember to use the spelling of there that tells about people owning something. Okay, number nine. Ben. You have been in school for many months. Ben. Now this one doesn't quite apply to us, right? We have been at home for many months. We have been at home for many months. Number nine is been. And finally, number 10. Because. I like apples because they are crunchy. Because. 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 Okay, I am going to read through them one more time. So that way you can check yours over. And then we will move on to our next thing in reading. Okay, number one is super. Number two, open. Number three, paper. Number four, even. Number five, silent. Number six, always. Number seven, now. Number eight, there. The there that means something belongs to them. The kids were riding their bike. There. Number nine, bin or Ben. And number 10, because. Okay, next in reading, you need your unit 11 packet and we're gonna work on pages 13 and 14. We're gonna say 15 for when we get to writing, which is after reading. Yesterday, we read about the super kids going to Happy Land, which was an amusement park, and they had all different kinds of rides and games. We talked about how sometimes there might be a word that you read that you don't know, and the way you can figure out what it means is by looking at the words around that word you don't know about and by looking at the picture. That is called using the context clues. So today, we are going to use our context clues, which will be the words around these underlined words and the pictures to help us figure out what that word that's underlined means. So, let's read number one together. The boat stopped with a big splash. Doc and Fritz got soaked. What do you think soaked means? You may have heard or used this word before. Okay, what happened to them? What's happening? The water's getting on them. The words nearby soaked says big splash. Okay, so we know that there was a big splash and that something happened to Doc and Fritz. They got soaked. Yes, they got wet. Now, do you think they got a little bit wet or very wet? They got very wet. Look at these giant splashes. So soaked means very wet. So we're going to write that. Very, V-E-R-Y, wet, W-E-T. Okay, number two, let's read it together. Alf and Edibetta felt terrified when they got stuck at the top of the Ferris wheel. What do you think terrified means? Let's look at some of the words nearby. Felt. So it was a feeling. They got stuck. How would you feel if you got stuck somewhere? Let's look at the picture. He, Alf, has his face in his hands. Edabetta has her mouth wide open. She can't look down. Terrified means 
scared, okay? When is another time you or someone else might be scared, S-C-A-R-E-D? Maybe in the dark. Maybe if you see something on TV that you don't like, it might be scary or might make you feel terrified. Okay, number three. Alf and Edibetta felt relieved when they could get off the Ferris wheel. What does relieved mean? Let's look at the sentence. We see the word felt again, so we know relieved is a feeling. And we see that they felt relieved when they could get off the ride. So how did they feel when they were on the ride? They felt scared. Now that they're off the ride, they're not terrified or scared, they are relieved. Let's look at the picture. They have smiles on their face. Edabetta is wiping her forehead going, phew. What do you think relieved means? Relieved means they feel better, okay? They felt better, all right? Alf and Edibetta felt better or good, better, B-E-T-T-E-R. They felt better when they could get off the Ferris wheel. Okay, they're no longer scared. The scary or frustrating thing is over. Now they feel better. They feel at peace. Let's flip to resource page 14, number four. Read it with me. Cass thinks cotton candy tastes delicious. What does delicious mean? We notice there's an exclamation point. Okay, so that could either mean really excited or really loud or really mad. Tastes, okay, that means that she's eating it. We see she's eating cotton candy. She has a smile on her face. She's rubbing her belly. Do you think she likes that cotton candy? Yes, she says it's delicious with an exclamation mark. So does she like it or does she really like it? She really likes it, so it's really good. So delicious means really good and we use the word delicious when we're talking about taste okay so we wouldn't say i had a delicious day that would be silly okay even though delicious means really good it means that when we're talking about food so you might say i had a delicious breakfast this morning number five read it with me Hot Rod and his dad were thrilled to ride the streak. Thrilled, what does that mean? Okay, well we see that Hot Rod and his dad were thrilled because they were riding the roller coaster. All right, now let's look at that. They're smiling, they're looking around, whereas back here, they're covering their eyes, they're screaming. Did they look scared? No, so they're not terrified. Did they look happy? Yeah. Do they look like they're having fun? Yeah, okay, so Hot Rod and his dad were happy to ride the streak. Okay, and we could even say they were so happy to ride the street because when you're thrilled, you are really happy or you're really excited. And number six, the super kids were exhausted after their day at Happy Land. They fell asleep on the ride home. What does exhausted mean? We see that the super kids were all exhausted they were feeling that way after their day at the park, and they also fell asleep on their way back home. And they're all yawning or sleeping. 
So what do you think exhausted means? Sleepy or tired. Okay, the super kids were tired. And sometimes you might say, I'm tired. But does that mean that you fall asleep right away? Not always, but look at the super kids. They fell asleep almost right away in the car ride home. So they are very tired. So exhausted means very tired. They walked around all day. They were in the sun all day. They went on a lot of big rides. They felt a lot of different emotions. They are very tired after their day at Happy Land. Okay? All right, you guys. Let's get out our word workbook now. Okay, so now you're gonna put into practice what we practice together in our resource page packet. On this page, page 51, you are going to do what we just did. You're gonna read the sentence and you need to pick what does the pink word mean? And you have two choices and one of them is correct. So you're gonna look at the words around it and the picture to help you. Let's do number one together, and then you are going to do the rest on your own, and you're going to take a picture of this page and your spelling test and turn it into me on Dojo. Okay, number one, the boat zipped down the hill. And we could say that zipped means either rushed or rested. Okay, so we know that we're talking about the boat and that it's going down the hill. Okay, when you're on something like a bike or a skateboard or roller skates or a scooter and you go down a hill, do you go faster or slower? Faster, okay? So if you're going fast, are you resting? No, you're rushing, okay? So the boat rushed down the hill. So we're gonna bubble that in nice and neat. And you can go ahead and do the rest on your own. Try your best. And then send me a picture when you're all done. Okay, now we're going to look at a nonfiction book. We haven't gotten to do that in a while. And I'm really excited to do this. Okay, first grade, I'm really excited to read this because you have read two books just this past time about the super kids being on boats. We read all about Oswald and his time on the sailboat, and we read all about Fritz and Doc on the boat where they got soaked on that ride at Happy Land. We are going to read more about boats today. So our book is called Making Waves. And what do you see in the photograph? A big boat and it's a big sailboat. Here is the big white sail. Okay, so this is a big sailboat. So is this boat more like the boat that Oswald rode or more like the one Fritz and Doc rode at the amusement park? It is more like the one Oswald rode. He sailed in a sailboat. And what is the same about this boat and the one he rode in the story, The Wish? They both have a sail. Okay, remember he needed to help with that sail. And this looks like it's going pretty fast because there's some big splashing waves. So they both could go pretty fast. This sailboat is much larger than the one that Oswald and the girl sailed in. And this boat, since it's so big, this could actually be sailed in the ocean or the sea. And remember, Oswald and the girl sailed on a lake, which is not as, um, which does not have as many waves and is smaller than the ocean. Okay, so we're going to read this nonfiction text. And who remembers what nonfiction means? Nonfiction means real. Okay, so we're gonna learn some real things about boats today. Would you like to zip down a river or paddle on a pond? Or is your dream to sail across the sea? Then hop on a boat. Boats float on just about every lake, river, and sea across the globe. 
They are many different shapes and sizes, and people use them in many different ways. Some boats are little. One or two people can use paddles to make a little boat go. And that's what these two boys are doing. A motor can make a little boat go. That's what's happening right here. Sails can make a little boat go. Wind fills the sails and the boat takes off. Right there. Little boats are perfect for fishing and playing. And here are these young boys on a little boat or a little kayak. So boats can float just about anywhere around the globe. Globe is another word for the world. Let's go on to the next page. A ship is a very big boat. Hundreds and hundreds of travelers can fit on this ship. People take trips on it just for fun. They can do lots of interesting things as the ship glides along. Has any, have any of you ever been on a cruise? Okay, this is what you would call a cruise ship. There's lots of fun activities and many people go on cruises for a vacation. Okay, before I read under those pictures, I just wanna point out that Right here, you can see that the words are a little bit bigger, okay? They're a little bit more bold or dark. So when I see those big words at the top, I know that they're a heading that tells us what one or more pages are about, okay? So this heading says a ship is a very big boat. So I think that's going to tell us about a kind of a very big boat. So here is our ship. And how is this different than the boat we just read about on the last page? It's much bigger. Let's see what kinds of things happen inside the ship. You can splash and swim and not get off the ship. So right in here, okay, they're kind of at a pool or a water park. See that pool in there? You can play games. They're playing basketball. You can ride a wave. This is an activity that pretends that there's like a wave that you would surf on, okay? There are 10 levels or decks on this ship. Here are all those levels. The spot where you sleep is your cabin. The ship has lots and lots of cabins. There are over 30 different spots to eat. Here's one of the restaurants. It looks like it's called the Dog House. Would you want to eat at a place called the Dog House? And finally, you can ride an animal. What is this thing called? Can you see that? It's called a merry-go-round or a carousel. So are those real animals you are riding? Nope. Helicopters can take off and land here. It's called a landing pad. So what do all these smaller pictures show us? They show us different things people can do on the ship. And what do those blue arrows point to? They point to all the different things people can do on the ship and right where those things are. So here's a close-up picture of them taking a splash. But there's the little splash area. Here's them playing basketball up close, but down here is where the court is. Here's where they make a wave. Here's where all those 30 restaurants are. Here is all their cabins. Okay. And what do travelers do for fun on this ship? Swim, play games, ride the carousel, eat. And where do they sleep? In the cabins. The cabins are kind of like a hotel room and each deck is a floor on the ship and there's 10 decks, okay? So this is sort of like a very, very big hotel with 10 floors. 
all right? That's way bigger than our school. Okay, now we're moving on to these boats. Up the top it says, working boats have jobs to do at sea. This boat takes people to work in the city. This one right over here. Many of the things we use every day are made in distant lands. They are packed in big containers and stacked on super big ships. The ships travel many miles to bring the things to us. That's one of these ships. Okay, it's called a container ship. They have all different kinds of items in those boxes. The nets on a fishing boat lift fish from the sea. What a catch! This boat puts out fires on ships or docks. It pumps water from the river to spray on the flames. Now this little boat down here is called a tugboat. Tugboats are little but strong. Tugboats help a big ship when it is close to land. They lead the ship to its dock so it can be unloaded. So what kind of ships did these two pages tell us about? They tell us about working boats. Working boats do jobs. They are not boats that you get on for fun like that other ship we looked at. And this orange boat is called a ferry boat. It takes people to work. Do you know where they are? Can you tell? Anybody know what this is? This is the Statue of Liberty. Anybody know where that is? That's in New York City. What do these workers do on this, this boat? They catch all those fish and what do you think they do with them? Sell them to restaurants or grocery stores. What is the job of this boat? It's like a fire boat. It helps put out fires. And where do you think the boat gets that water? They use it from the river that they're riding on. And let's go back to the container ship. Each of those boxes are called containers. And those containers come from all over the globe. Okay, they're from other countries. In the past, we've read about toys made in China that travel on ships across the ocean in containers like these. And what do these do, these tugboats? They help push and pull those big working boats to get to their landing spot and to dock. And finally, some boats are just plain silly. They may not be speedy, but these boats make waves no matter where they go. If something is just plain silly, it means that something is very silly or funny. What is silly about the boats on this page? I'm gonna bring this up so you can see them a little better. What's silly about this white boat? It looks like a zipper. How about this boat? It looks like a guitar. What about this boat? This looks like a paper boat. And how about this boat? This boat has somebody's face on it where the rope comes out. What does it look like he's doing? Slurping up spaghetti. Okay, this is where we're gonna stop and we're gonna move on to writing. In writing, we need to look at two pages. We need to look at resource page 15, and we also need to look at the page we worked on Wednesday, your book review about one of three books, either The Spingle Spangle Talent Show, The Wish, or In Case of Rain. So we need to check our writing before we can turn it in, and that's where page 15 comes in. So the first thing that we need to do is my sentences make sense. So we need to make sure our sentences make sense. So let's check. The Spangle Spangle Talent Show 
is about the super kids sharing their talents in a talent show. Does that make sense? Yes. Let's pretend that I forgot the word talents. And it said, the Spingle Spangle talent show is about the super kids sharing their in a talent show. Does that make sense? No. So if you read your sentences out loud, and it sounds like you might need to add a word or take out a word, make sure you do that, okay? I think it is a great story. Here are the reasons why I think so. Tic Tac and Talk told funny and creative jokes. Edibetta finished the show with amazing flips and tricks. That is why it's a great story. Okay, so once you make sure that your sentences make sense and fix anything you need to, you can check it off. Number two, each sentence begins with an uppercase letter. Okay, so we just have to check the first word of each sentence. So we have the, okay, uppercase T, I, they gave that one to us, Tick has an uppercase T, number two, Edibetta, uppercase E, the ending, uppercase T. Okay, what do you think comes next after we check if there's an uppercase letter? You got it. Each sentence be ends with an end mark, period, exclamation mark, or question mark, whichever one makes sense. So this time we just have to check the end and the last word of our sentences. The Spangle Spangle Talent Show is about the super kids sharing their talents in a talent show, period. Remember that you do not need a period at the end of each line, but at the end of each sentence. I think it is a great story. Exclamation mark. What if I had a question mark? I think it is a great story. Would that make sense? No. What if I had a period? I think it is a great story. Does that make sense? It does, but I want an exclamation mark because I want to show how excited I am. I think it is a great story. Here's the end of my first sentence. See a period there? I'm going to make it a little darker. Here's my next sentence. There's the last word. Here's my period. I'll make it a little darker. And story. And there's my period. I'm going to make it a little darker. Okay. So I use two different kinds of end marks. You do not have to. You just need to make sure you have one at the end of each page. Each name begins with an uppercase letter. This is important. So each super kid name needs to have an uppercase letter. Okay, just like when you write your name and you need an uppercase letter, so do they. Okay, so we have the super kids. That's uppercase. Tick, tack, and talk, uppercase. Add a beta, uppercase, and no other super kids. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that off the list. Next on the list says, the first, last, and each important word in the book title begins with an uppercase letter. Yes, when we write the title of a book, we need to have an uppercase letter for pretty much every word. The, uppercase T, spingle, uppercase S, spangle, uppercase S, talent, uppercase T, show, uppercase S. We can check that off our list. And finally, I used my best spelling. All right, remember when we've talked about your spelling, it needs to, you need to make sure that the word, when you read it, it sounds the way the word sounds, okay? So the Spingle Spangle Talent Show, if you sound out a word and it doesn't sound like the word you wanted to write, that means you're gonna have to fix it, okay? I think it is a great story told funny and creative jokes. Sneaky E makes the O say its name. And it better finished the show with amazing flips and tricks. That is why it's a great story.
Okay, I'm going to check it off. Okay, you guys. So even though I didn't have to fix too many things, and you might think, I don't have to fix anything. I already looked. You still need to do your editing checklist, okay? So that way it's the very best you can do. When you're all done doing that, you can take a picture of this page and you can submit it to your Dojo portfolio. If you already submitted yours, what you can do is check to make sure there's nothing else you want to fix or change and then just send a new picture, okay? Let's move on to math. Okay, so for today for math, we're doing something that I think is really fun. We are going to be looking at the clock and reading the time and then you are going to be writing a sentence of telling what you do at that time. And it says use o'clock or half pass in your sentences. So it says what I do in the morning and what time is it right here? It is the short hour hand is pointing at the 8. The long minute hand is pointing at the 12. So it is 8 o'clock. So you would say something like at 8 o'clock I and you're gonna say what you do now just to let you know if you come to morning prayer in the morning it's at 9 30 in the morning so eight o'clock in the morning is an hour and a half before that so you might be sleeping you might be eating breakfast you might be watching TV you might be doing some of your work I don't know but I cannot wait to find out then it says what I do in the afternoon and let's read what time it is. The hour hand is pointing between the two and the three. The minute hand is on the six, so it is 2.30 or half past two. So at half past two, at half past two, I and say what you do around 2 30 in the afternoon maybe you go outside maybe you read a book maybe you go on a bike ride I don't know I can't wait to find out though and finally what I do at night and I'll leave this one all for you to do okay so remember to tell me what you do at eight o'clock and at half past two don't just write what I wrote you have to finish the sentence remember to use your uppercase letters and periods then we're going to skip page 129 and you're also going to do page 130 on your own and this is what it says aunt betsy is baking some muffins for lori look at the pictures write one two three and four to show the correct order so you need to look at the time and use the picture to help you and whichever is the first step for making these muffins you're going to write a number one on that line the next step you're going to write number two a number three and for the last step a number four and you might think oh, I'll just look at the pictures but make sure you look at the time too to double check to make sure that makes sense okay okay you guys you're gonna do 130 and 128 on your own and you're gonna submit it on dojo for me to look at I cannot wait to see what you do in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening Okay, first grade, great job so far today in reading, writing, and math. Next up, we are in social studies, and like I said, you need your U.S. map. What we're going to do today is we are going to be learning about where the biggest one of these landforms are in our country, the United States of America. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you some pictures and telling you about these things, and then we're going to identify on the map where they are. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start with the landform A volcano. So this volcano is the tallest volcano in the United States, and it's also the tallest volcano in the whole world. It is called Mauna Kea, and it is in the state Hawaii. All right, and the last time it erupted, which means that magma came out as hot lava, was 4,000 years ago. Next up, we have a canyon, and this is the Grand Canyon. It is in the state of Arizona, and it is the largest canyon in the United States. People visit there all the time, and if you can see, there's lots of rocks and plants around. But visitors are not supposed to take or move any of the rocks and plants, so that way everyone who visits gets to see everything 
where it was supposed to be. Next up, we have mountain, and this mountain is called Denali, and it is in Alaska. When I was your age, it was called Mount McKinley, but they changed the name five years ago to Denali. It is the tallest mountain in the United States. It is not the biggest, but the tallest, and it is 20 feet high, and the upper half is always covered in snow. Next up, we have a valley, and remember that valleys are the lowest point. We can see those mountains, the highest points in the background, but the part we're talking about is this flat valley. This valley is called Death Valley, and it's in California. Now, don't get too scared, okay, because people visit there all the time, so you will not die if you visit there. That is just the nickname. It is the hottest place in the United States and in the whole world, okay? It gets really, really hot, and it's very, very dry, and it's best to visit in the winter and spring when it is not so hot. These are the Great Plains, and the Great Plains are so interesting because they're not just in one state. They're actually in parts of 10 states, and I'm going to show you where they are. Everywhere you see red, that is where the Great Plains are. So they stretch from the top of the United States all the way down to the bottom, right in the middle of the country through 10 whole states. Next up is the ocean. And there are four oceans that the world recognizes. The United States recognizes five, but close to us, there's just two. And this is the Atlantic Ocean, which is closest to Maryland. So if you've ever been to Ocean City or Virginia Beach or the Outer Banks or some parts of Florida, you've swam in the Atlantic Ocean. Next is the Pacific Ocean, which is on the other side of the United States, very far from Maryland. It's close to California, okay, and this ocean is a little bit more rocky and a little bit colder than the Atlantic Ocean. So the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans are the two oceans that are near the United States, and Maryland is closest to the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so let's start with that volcano, which is in Hawaii. So it's right down here. All of these islands are Hawaii, but this is the big island of Hawaii. So I'm going to take my markers, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a little gray triangle, and I'm going to draw it a little bit red on the top to be like the lava. Okay, so that's what you can do on yours. I'll zoom down. That is what we're going to say is our largest volcano in the United States. So you can go ahead and do that. And then we are going to move on to the tallest mountains in the United States, which is in Alaska. So I'm going to zoom back out. And here is Alaska. Okay, it's not really right here, but a lot of times for United States maps, they put it close that way we can include all 50 states so for our mountains i'm going to go ahead and use my gray marker again and i'm just going to kind of make a lot of bumpy mountains okay and then i'm going to draw a little line to show that the top half is always covered in snow so i'm going to zoom in so you can see those okay so so far we have our volcano in Hawaii and our mountains in Alaska. Okay, next up we're going to move on to our canyon in Arizona. I'm going to zoom back out. Arizona is right over here and our canyon is kind of brown and orange. So I'm going to take my orange marker 
And I'm just gonna cover and draw the shape of our canyon in our foldable. Okay, so notice that our canyon kind of goes like this. So here's Arizona, and I'm gonna draw it in orange. That is where the Grand Canyon is in the state of Arizona. Okay. Next up, we have our deepest valley, Death Valley, and that is over here in California. And I'm gonna take my yellow marker because it is a desert valley, so lots of sand. And I drew a deep U to show that it goes down low. And I'm gonna trace that in yellow. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in for you. So, so far, all of our landforms are on what's called the west coast of the United States, far from Maryland. But we'll move closer to the east coast. So we have our volcano in Hawaii, our mountain in Alaska, our canyon in Arizona, and our valley in California. Next, we have the Great Plains. And in that picture, they covered the Great Plains in red, but remember these plains a lot of times are grassy plains. So I'm gonna actually take my green marker. So I'm gonna zoom out. And the Great Plains cover these states, okay? So I'm gonna take my green marker. And so let's start with this top one. So go ahead and put a little line here and then right next to it. Okay, and then right over here, right below it, right over here. Okay, so so far we have two, four, right here, right over there, so two, four, six. This one right over here, it's included. Down below, over here, and the state too. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 states. So the 10 states that we start with, this is Montana, and next to it is North Dakota, then right underneath is South Dakota, here's Wyoming, next we have Nevada, then we have Colorado, here's Kansas, here is Oklahoma, here's Texas, and here is New Mexico. So all 10 of those states have the Great Plains. And if you want to, like in our map, we can kind of draw a big circle to show kind of like where they are in the United States. Okay, that will help us. Moving on, we are going to talk about the oceans. So a lot of times on a map where you are, there is a star. So I'm gonna take a black marker and I'm gonna show you where Maryland is and we're gonna put a little teeny tiny star. Here is Maryland, okay? So this is our state. This is not the part of Maryland we live in, but I'm gonna put the star there because it's the biggest part. So we are here in Maryland. There's my star, okay? And the Atlantic Ocean is right here. So pretty close to us. So I'm gonna trace over that in blue, okay? Because it's the ocean, so it's blue. So, Atlantic Ocean, A, T, L, A, N, T, I, C, Ocean, O, C, E, A, N. So, see how close we are to the Atlantic Ocean? Then we're going to talk about the Pacific Ocean, which is all the way over here, very far from us. Okay, the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean in the world. So here we go. Pacific, P-A-C-I-F-I-C. -I -I and then ocean, O-C-E-A-N. Now, like I said before, this is not where the only canyon, the only valley, the only mountain, the only volcano, and the only oceans, but these are the largest ones in the United States. 
and I know you're gonna say, but you forgot the island. The island is also in this big island of Hawaii. So I will just take my yellow marker and right underneath, I will just draw a little island like that. Okay. So next week, we are gonna be talking a little more about landforms and I'm having a really good time and I hope you are too. And what you can actually do is you can take both your map and your landform and you can go into your green science and social studies notebook and you can write the date and you can glue this map down and you might have to glue it like this and the same thing with your flip book you would just glue the volcano nothing else and that way you would still be able to turn it okay but that's just so that you can save these and use them to help you learn so you can do that and then we're going to move on to religion where you need your cardstock, your construction paper, and your glue. Okay, you guys, so this Sunday is Mother's Day and we've been talking a lot about Mary, our Heavenly Mother. And today we are gonna pray a Hail Mary for our earthly mother and then we're going to make her something for Mother's Day for you to give her on Sunday. Okay, so let's say our prayer for our mother for everything that she might need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so... You need your piece of cardstock, and the first thing that you're going to do is we're going to fold it in a special way, and I'm going to show you how. So you need to take one end, and you need to fold it kind of like to the middle, okay? And once you get it where you want it, you're going to crease the edge. And then you're going to take this side, and you're going to fold it behind, okay? So I'm going to flip it over. You're going to fold it behind, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, so I don't want you to worry about that. Okay, and now you kind of have like an accordion. Okay, and we're gonna be putting something here, here, and here. Okay, and this is where your construction paper comes in, but you don't need it quite yet. So first you need your coloring supplies, okay? And what we need to do is we're gonna have this be the cover, then we're gonna put something here, and then here, okay? So you wanna make sure when you close it, the first word is on the cover, then as you open it, the second thing is here and the last thing is here, okay? So close your book and we're gonna write something on the front and we're gonna write it in pencil right now, then you can decorate just in case you accidentally put it on the wrong side, okay? So the first thing we're gonna write is mom and then we're gonna put dot, 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 okay? So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, so on my cover, I have mom, dot, 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 and what that means is we're going to continue the message on the next page. So M-O-M, -M, nice and big, dot, 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 and then we open it up, so that way we're ready for our second page right here. Mom, right here. And now you need your construction paper, and you need your scissors too, I didn't say that, but you need them. And you're going to cut a piece, any color, and you're going to glue it here but before you glue it we're going to write a message so get your scissors pick the paper you want cut it to be about this size and then i'm going to show you what we're going to write on it here's my paper it's about a good size to be glued on right here and it says i love you and i put the o in love as a little heart and i didn't put an exclamation mark because we're not done with our sentence so so far we're going to have mom I love you and then we're gonna put our last message here so once you write I love you you can glue it on right here okay so so far we have the cover mom I love you and then we're gonna write one more thing here and we're gonna write two pieces so the message is gonna be mom I love you to pieces and I'm gonna show you where you're gonna put it you're gonna write two pieces down here and then you're gonna draw a big heart up here and I'll show you why so first we're gonna write two pieces that's two words. Okay, so here's how you spell two pieces. T-O, finger space, P-I-E-C-E-S, exclamation mark. And then you're going to put a big heart. And then comes the really fun part. Mom, I love you to pieces. So let's make sure you have it in the right order. Mom, I love you to pieces. And you're going to take your construction paper, any color you want. 
And what you're gonna do is you are going to rip little pieces, okay? Any colors, multiple colors, and you're gonna glue them in the heart, kind of like a stained glass window, okay? So I'm gonna show you mine to give you some ideas, okay? So don't do anything yet. And here's all my colors. I have some yellow, some red, some purple, some orange. You can rip them smaller if you'd like, but don't rip them too big because you want to have a lot of colors glued in your heart. Okay, now I'm going to show you them glued in my heart. Okay, so here it is. And I have some pieces left over, which is fine. And I actually had to rip some even smaller because you really want to try to stay along the edge of your heart so it keeps its shape. And then when you're done, you can even trace over that heart to show, just to make it like a little bit darker. Okay, you might even want to do this before you glue down. Either way is fine. Okay, mom, I love you to pieces. And I have a couple more white marks, so what I might do is I might just rip little tiny pieces and glue them down and stick them down, okay? And then with any of your leftover pieces, you could do another heart on the back. Okay, it's up to you. Try to cover up those spaces and try to make your heart nice and neat for your mom. Then when you get all done, you can take any colors you want. You can trace the mom, you can trace to pieces. And you just wanna make sure that your card closes and then opens. Mom, I love you to pieces. You have a whole blank back, so you could write a note, you could draw another picture, you could finish. Okay, just make sure you trace this and you trace this, so that way it's perfect for your mom, okay, and she'll just love it. Okay, so I hope you have a good time doing this, and give it to her on Sunday, because that is Mother's Day, and make sure that you're extra nice to her that day too, okay? All right, you guys. I will see you on Monday.